Hello, I'm Dr. David Anderson with the Veterinary Medical Center for Horses and Farm Animals here at the University of Tennessee. And today I'm visiting with Dr. Mark Caldwell. Dr. Caldwell is board certified with the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine. He's a specialist in diseases of cattle. And, um, you know, we're here in the late winter, early spring. Calves are being born. One of the problems that we hear a lot of people talk about, a lot of phone calls about, is calf scours. And so, uh, what are we talking about with scours? What does that mean? Scours is any condition that causes diarrhea in calves. Okay, so diarrhea in calves, I would recognize that by what exactly? Well, the, sometimes it's easy to observe the calf actually have watery feces. The color may be yellow, may be gray, may be, uh, have a lot of mucus in it, may have specks of blood in it, tinges of blood in it. And, and probably a lot of caking around the rear yeah. end where dirty, that manure gets contaminated. Dirty rear end, dirty tail, wet yeah. bottom. Yeah, and so um, is scours a, a, um, a herd problem or an individual calf problem? It can be both. Yeah. Certainly affects individual calves, and those individual calves need to receive uh, treatment, therapy, but it can also be a, a herd level problem that can be prevented and managed. Okay, so, so um, it sounds like a problem I want to prevent and not treat if I can. Uh, what are the risk factors for calf scours? What can I do to try to keep that from being a problem in my herd? One of the most important things is to make sure that your calves are receiving proper immunity. Uh, and what we're really talking about is colostrum absorption at the right amount of time. For beef cattle, the ability to ensure that that calf has, has uh, absorbed enough colostrum is making sure he gets up, stands up, nurses really well within the first 12 hours of his life. The other risk factor is dystocias. If you can attend any dystocias and make sure that that calf has a, has a good start to his life, uh, that's another um, way to mitigate uh, the risk of neonatal diarrhea or calf scours. Okay, so the importance, what's important about getting that colostrum in in the first 12 hours? Why is that a magic number for calves? Colostrum is full of antibodies. It's full of other immune stimulating uh, compounds but the calf's gut can only absorb those antibodies and those immune compounds within a certain limited time, within those 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. And if that calf doesn't stand up, if he doesn't get that first meal of colostrum, he, he runs the risk of not absorbing any of those antibodies and therefore he is really immunocompromised at that point. Okay, so, so I've got a farm and, uh, and I've got cows and heifers. Is there a difference between cows and heifers in how they transfer immunity to their calves. Yeah, heifers have a lot more a difficult problem. One reason, they don't mother up as well, so they don't, they don't take care of the calf as well as a, as a mature cow would. The other thing, there are some subtle differences in the quality of colostrum that heifers make compared to cows. Cows spend a little bit more uh, energy, put a little more resources into providing the antibodies that go into their colostrum. So heifers have a little bit lower, lower um, antibody concentration of their colostrum and, and therefore you should probably as a producer pay more attention to the calves that are born to heifers. Okay, so if I uh, start recognizing a scours problem in my calves, so I've got dirty tails and maybe some, maybe I see them with really watery diarrhea and whatnot, are there things that I can do and manage on my own or, or are there things that I need to get a veterinarian to come out as quickly as possible? For the calves that do have diarrhea that you know are, are already scouring, the, one of the most important things to preventing uh, treatment costs and, and death in those calves is maintaining their hydration status. A thing that a farmer can do on his own is provide oral electrolytes. And there's lots of products out there, uh, all of them are pretty good, but what a, what a producer can do, even for a beef calf, is to mix up a bottle of electrolytes, we're usually talking about two liters, and then allow that calf to nurse that bottle of electrolytes. So two liters or about a half a gallon at a time yeah. when I'm trying to supplement them. And um, if they, how would I know if things are getting out of control? And so I need, I need, neck, I need extra help. I'm gonna call my veterinarian. How would I know to do that? Well, when a calf becomes weak, when he becomes recumbent or unable to stand, when his eyes look really sunken into his head or if you pinch the skin over his shoulder and it stays tinted, that's a calf that's severely dehydrated. That's a calf that needs a veterinarian's care. What that veterinarian would do to provide him is, first thing is IV fluids uh, in order to, to uh, correct his hydration status. Not only that, but maybe be able to provide him antibiotics, maybe be able to provide him anti-inflammatories. And so those calves that have scours and, and we treat, and um, 
are they likely to recover? And if they recover, are they likely to, to grow normally? Am I going to, you know, get a calf that's worthwhile? They certainly are. Yeah. Early, early intervention is key. Knowing when uh, to call your veterinarian uh, in a calf that, that is starting to look uh, not quite as bright and, and alert as the other calves, uh, early intervention is key. So having your veterinarian come out and take care of those calves, uh, whether they provide IV fluids or anti-inflammatories, that's going to be the key. Those calves will go on to grow. Uh, they will do well. Um, most of the time, um, maintaining their hydration status of the calf is, is the important factor. So if you, can, if you can keep that calf hydrated, the pathogen, the disease course, will, will go through its course uh, and they will, uh, they'll recover well. So if I have scours problems this year in my calves, am I always going to have it? Is that something I'm going to see every year? Or? Well, there are some management factors that can be associated okay. with it. First thing is, uh, the first question I would ask is, uh, is a producer calving his, his cows out on the same pasture, the same concentrated piece of ground? Are they calving into a clean environment? Are they calving out in pasture where things are dry, uh, and not wet and muddy and mucky? Um, so it is something that can be managed. That would be the, one, uh, the first areas that I would try to focus on from a management standpoint is to spread my cows out a little bit at calving time, decrease the load of pathogens that's in the environment that uh, aren't assaulting these calves when they first hit the ground. Okay, so it's important to have a good working relationship with a veterinarian to help me control that problem in our, in our herd. And that's what we're about here at the University of Tennessee is premium health care. And we want to help you and your veterinarian maintain a profitable and successful herd. If you're having problems with scours, don't have a, hesitate to give us a call. If we can help you with anything else, don't hesitate to give us a call. We'd love to see you in Knoxville sometime.